Welcome to the light side of chemistry. Did you know that all light comes from the movement of electrons within atoms? This chapter will illuminate how we use light to study the internal electronic structure of the atom. But before we focus on atoms, we need to see the light as a wave. And this section will define four specific properties of light, speed, wavelength, frequency, and amplitude. Light is a form of energy called electromagnetic radiation. The best way to think of light is as a wave packed up into little packages called photons. Photons have no mass, but they have momentum. How does that make any sense? Well, that's just how the photons be. To visualize a wave of light, imagine little electromagnetic wiggles like these animations show. Some waves wiggle faster than the other waves. You'll note that the violet light has a lot faster wiggling than the red light on the right image. But both violet light and red light travel at the same speed. There are four numbers which describe the most important properties of light. The first is frequency, or the number of wiggles per second. We abbreviate it with the Greek letter nu, which looks like a fancy V. The units of frequency are inverse seconds, or one over a second. At first, inverse seconds seem like a pretty strange unit, but if you think of it as per second, it makes more sense. As I said earlier, frequency is waves per second, or waves divided by seconds. We have another name for inverse seconds, and that is Hertz. The wavelength of light is the distance the wave travels in one cycle. In other words, it is the distance from the top of one peak to the top of an adjacent peak in a wave of light. We abbreviate wavelength with the Greek letter lambda. You probably already know that the speed of light is a constant at three times 10 to the eighth meters per, per second. This is about 5 million miles per second. And this leads us to our first important equation for this chapter. If we multiply frequency by wavelength, we get speed. Since the speed of light is a constant, we can use this equation to calculate frequency from wavelength and wavelength from frequency. As always, pay attention to the units before you plug something in. Wavelength is often measured in nanometers, which must be converted to meters before we calculate the frequency. The last property of light is amplitude, which is the height of the waves. This corresponds to the brightness of the light. Uh, in this class, though, amplitude will not be as important as the other three values. This slide shows a good visualization of those four properties of light. Notice that on the left image, our wavelength decreases as we go from red to yellow to blue light. Because these three light waves travel at the same speed, this means their frequency increases as we go from red to yellow to blue. As wavelength decreases, frequency increases. All right, time to practice using important equation number one. The common neodymium YAG laser is often tuned to an output of 532 nanometers, which is a bright green. What is this laser's frequency? Pause the video, give it a try. Here's the solution. Before we use important equation number one, we have to convert the wavelength in nanometers to meters. Remember to use the correct conversion factor. Now, plug that into the frequency equation at the top. And the speed of light will always be given to you on an exam. If we solve for frequency, we get 5.64 times 10 to the 14 hertz, or 5.64 hundred trillion wiggles per second in the color green. We humans can detect certain frequencies of light with our eyes and we named these frequencies visible light. But visible light is just a tiny part of the whole light spectrum. 
Every frequency you can think of as a different color of light, even if humans cannot see this specific color ourselves. Radio waves have the lowest frequency of light with wavelengths as big as buildings. Microwaves have shorter wavelengths. They have wavelengths around the size of a centimeter or a millimeter. Infrared waves are emitted from hot objects and are often, uh, their wavelengths are measured in micrometers. Visible light has wavelengths in the hundreds of nanometers. And then at shorter wavelengths and higher frequencies, we start to get into the uh, dangerous colors of light, the ultraviolet, the x-ray, and especially the gamma ray waves can be harmful to living tissue. While this concludes my introductory lecture on light, I'm going to let this animation play out for a bit. I'd like you to notice that the waves on the right side of the prism travel at the same speed, but the red waves with the long wavelength have a lower frequency than the violet waves do. If you can get that, feel it in your bones, then I think you've absorbed the most important part of this lecture.